funeral is going to cost you or your family around seven thousand dollars. Just you know, with everything included, caskets. Um, then cre uh, cremations are going to be around seventy or fifty-seven hundred. It's a little cheaper, and there are alternatives. You can rent a casket. And <laughs> yes, you can rent a casket and you can get cheaper urns. Uh, they're called alternative urns. I believe they're just plastic boxes. Um, and then, you know, with those options, you can get it down to about $3,600. So, so what did you say the cost was for cremation? Around 5700 in Colorado. Why? <laughs> It's an industry. I think it's, uh, you know, a lot of for profits. But that is why I'm going to be very excited to tell you about alternatives and uh, cheaper options. There are direct cremation um, options on the front range. There's two, uh, two different places that are called AFTER and Colorado Cremation Services. And they offer packages as little as $895. So why there's this vast difference, I don't know other than for-profit industry. Um, another cheap alternative is also the only legal open-air cremation in the U.S. It is the Crestome End of Life Project, just a few hours away. The only legal one in the U.S. And their options start at only $300. So if you, know, you are thinking that's more your speed, you would like a nice, I'm not really, I don't know how to put the term of it, but you know, open air, they covers the structure, the shroud, the wood, everything, and there's a beautiful ceremony, and it's pretty close. So um, if that's still not exactly what you're looking for, and you're like, I don't want to spend hardly any money at all. I don't want my family to spend any money at all. There are some free and legal options. Might be a little odd to some people, but that's, that's why I'm here, to present them all. So first is uh, donating your body to science. There's you know organ donors, but you can donate your whole body. There are some more stipulations depending on what company you go with. Uh, science care uh, has restrictions on your weight. If you are an organ donor, you can't donate to them. Um, communicable diseases, so it just depends on who you wanna go with and what their restrictions are. If, uh, I know we're landlocked here, and lake burials aren't really a thing, but if you want to go to live in the ocean, past life, in the ocean, you can do so. You can be buried, or you can be released to the ocean, both intact or cremated, as long as you're three nautical miles offshore, and the EPA has a MERSE permit that allows this. Uh, they've got a beautifully built website with all the instructions and how to do so under that permit. You don't have to pay any permit fees. It's all covered. And if there, if you do something a little different, it may require a different permit. So just go to their website. That's an option you want to look at. I talked to a woman yesterday who said, I just want someone to tie cement to my ankles and dump me overboard. What's the website? Um, is that a pamphlet? Yeah, I think so. If not, um, I can write it down. It's or the site I was thinking of, but you said it today. Yeah, it's uh, the EPA. Oh, it's the EPA yeah. for a permit. Yeah, and it should it tells you how to be covered under their MPRSE general permit. So all of that would have to be discussed and like have it written like in a will beforehand, right? Because after you can't really yeah. say, well, this is what they wanted. Yeah, so um, it advanced care directives, and uh, that would be a good one. Five wishes also is another service that you can put in your wishes for afterlife. Also, you can just communicate to your family. Um, you know, if it's, there's no, like, they had to have it written down, it's better, probably less legal loopholes that you'll face if you do have it written down. Yeah, okay. So, um, they just also have, if you're gonna be buried in a casket, what that casket needs to look like, how to help the sinking of it and stuff like that. Um, ashes are very easy to just, as long as you're three nautical miles off board, you can just release them. 
the body has a few more stipulations. Another free option is a backyard burial. If you have generational land here and you know it's gonna stay in your family or you expect it to stay in your family, you can indeed bury your loved one. You do have to contact your zoning and planning commission and boards to make sure it is so many feet, meters, yards away from roads, buildings, waterways, and utilities. So that's kind of the big legal area there. Also, um, you might want to think about property values. If it was to sell, do you really, you know, are you positive it's going to stay in your family? Things like that. Um, and if that is really, you you grew up on this land, you want it to stay in your family, you want to stay there, there are some, you know, cool options for how to kind of speed up the decomposition so you return quickly to the earth. You just want to be buried between 18 and 30 inches. Um, that creates a small barrier to keep away scavenges, um, and it helps speed up composition. A uh, Ciawa, uh, backyard burial. Oh, oh, yeah. So if you wanted to be planted at home, or would you have to be in something or just? Uh, they just recommend a shroud. Oh. So that could be cloth. Um, Co. I looked up how to pronounce her name. C E I O does a mushroom infinity shroud. The mushroom thing. Yeah. That's what yeah. I was curious about. Yeah. You don't have to, but it is highly recommended. How much around are those mushroom seeds? That is a not it's something I found. I will have to look that up. Okay. I know that they will infuse your body with mushrooms as well as provide a shroud. I did not catch how much it was though. Oh. I will look that up. Thank you. Um, so if any of these options are the free options are for you. Just please make sure, note that it is required by law to have a death certificate within five days of passing. So if you keep somebody on, at home or travel with them, you know, to the ocean, there are ways to do that, and it is legal uh, to do so. Just make sure you get that death certificate within five days, or you're going to face a lot of, or your family's going to face a lot of issues. So could I ask one to talk yeah, yeah, go for all it. the questions, but I was always curious, like <clears throat> some some family members in another state <clears throat> when they want to come back home to be buried. Mm -hmm. Um do you have to get it professionally done? You do not. Oh wow. Um the recommendation is probably a pickup truck. It's, so this obviously is a morbid topic, so forgive me, but I, the recommendation is to use kitty litter to transport the, the body, just so as the body goes through its phases, um, it prevents anything from leaking anywhere, but it is perfectly legal to do so. Do them for free in your own truck? Yes. Oh. Yep. My husband drove his dad from one state to the other did rent, I think, a limousine or some kind okay. of a nice yeah. something. But anyway, and then they buried him in the family cemetery on the land. Yeah. That was very common. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's things that a lot of people don't think about because, you know, the industry, the funeral information industry, you know, that's, they make money by saying you've got to do it this way. Yeah. But you don't, you do not have to do it that way. And it is legal. There are a few states that it is not, I believe, Alaska is one, um, probably because you have to cross Canada to do so, oh. and uh, a few others. Uh, but for the general here to the ocean, you should be fine. So, um, uh, cremation alternatives. So if you don't want an earth burial, and cremation still isn't really what you want. Um, a big thing that has become legal and starting to become more and more popular is to become a human compost. So turning your body back into usable soil. The only restriction is the soil cannot be used for growing food for human consumption. Uh, but you can use it to plant a beautiful memorial garden. You can spread it on your land. You can spread it in national lands, stuff like that. Um, they, it is kind of expensive, but it is an option. It's more expensive than the free and cheap cremation options, but 
It starts at $5,000 with the natural funeral over on the front range, and Recompose is another company that provides the service, and it's about $7,000. There is also um, alkaline hydrolysis, and it's they call it a white flame cremation, although there is no flame. They use a combination of water, pressure, and temperature to reduce the body. And what's left is bones that they pulverize and return to your loved ones as kind of a white ash. That is available also on the front range and um, it starts at about $3,300. So that is another alternative. But what I'm really passionate about is, let's say you know you want to be cremated, but you don't want to end up like my great grandparents in our garage from house to house to state to state <laughs> in a box. There are so many cool options. So um, before I started this research, this was the one I really wanted. I wanted to be planted and come back as a tree. I love trees. I think they're very significant. I think they, pull, they hold a lot of meaning for me. And there's biodegradable urns that it's, most of them are two compartments and your ashes go in one and a little seed and um, nutrition goes in another, you plant it, and it becomes a tree or your plant is choosing. There are many companies that provide this. Uh, they start at $98. I think the most expensive one was $300. Some include the tree, some include the seeds, some include a sapling. Most of them help you decide where or what kind of plant to get for survival in your area, which is really cool. So you don't get something that's meant for the tropics and you're in the desert and it dies and that's how you remember your loved one. Excuse me, um, yeah. where is that available? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure what you're talking about that you follow the tree. So Eternity Trees is going to be your $98 option and they will let you choose a plant or tree um, online. So I can write, I, I think Eternity Tree might be in the brochure. Is that just the container? It's just the container. Yeah, it doesn't have anything it to do with no. cremation. It's just in where, oh, okay. So you still need to do like the cremation to yeah. get yeah. you down to Yeah, the these are all, these, right? continuing this will all be post-cremation alternatives, so you still need to do the cremation. Okay. So my recommendation is, you know, probably a low cost or even the Crestone End of Life Project um, you know, low cost direct cremation, and then you get these options. But you know, if you're going to spend money on the urn anyway, then these are cool options. So that hundred dollars is just for the urn. You have to pay eight hundred dollars for the cremation. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So the post cremation um, options are just going to be after whatever cremation service you choose. So, so that cremation is only eight hundred. I'm just curious. What? Why would there be a cremation that's fifty? So your traditional cremation options at normal crematoriums, so your funeral and cremation homes, those are going to be their packages. So they're going to include, um, you know, just all your traditional services. Um, they provide a lot of the legal documents you need. So there's, you know, they've got really nice packages for you. The cheaper options are going to be much more condensed, so the bare minimum. Um, so that's kind of the difference in prices. Just do your service at your church. You could, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and yeah you don't so have to pay for that. You know? Yeah. The difference is the average or the traditional average cost is going to be your big for-profit funeral and crematorium homes. Yeah. And then what I'm also discussing is all the cheaper other options. You know, you can kind of build your perfect all package. Cart. All the cart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all the cart package and a lot of a lot of the things you can do for free. If you, uh, if so, if you did say the mushroom shoot in your backyard, mm -hmm. do you still have to take the body to like, you know, to get fluid taken out? Like what no. those things called where they go? No, and um, embalming. Yeah. No, like um, these are greener options do not require embalmation. So that way it doesn't seep into the ground. You have to do it. Wow. I, yeah, I would recommend probably doing it pretty rapidly. I mean, different you know, family scattered across the country. It's not. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you know, different cultures have different times of keeping the deceased with them before you know returning them back to the earth and things. So it's kind of on preference. 
Oh, so the bot, so the one in the very oldest, the dimensional suit, you really wouldn't have time to do viewings and stuff. Oh, you could. It. Yeah, you absolutely could. Um, there's different ways to preserve um, cooling packs, ice. Uh, once again, the kitty litter helps with just the absorption of things. There's, but they've got special ice packs you can use to preserve bodies for okay. viewing and things like that. To go view or whatever, yeah. and you'd have to tie to it at a funeral. What's that? You'd have to go to a funeral home to have them hold the body to do a viewing at the... If that's what you want. Okay. You can also have it at home. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. That's... Was say, yeah, that's how they always did it in yep, the old yes. farm days in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. oh, wow, the body was laid out in the living room for I think two days. Yep. Yeah. Um. You. I mean, the whole five days. Five. Like I said, different cultures have different thing traditions, but a few days you can usually preserve somebody for pretty long. Do you have a question about? Yeah. You said fifty-seven hundred in Colorado. Mm -hmm. That's the average. Three years ago, I had my house and they made it at Crippen for $17.95. Awesome. That included um, as many death certificates as mm -hmm. I thought I needed. Mm -hmm. We would have done a program at the, at the church, but some other things that they needed. We would have done an obituary. Right. Uh, so that's just the average cost throughout Colorado. So you've got really expensive ones, really inexpensive ones. I don't know how inflation has changed these prices. I'm sure it's higher than that yeah. now. But I was thinking, <laughs> not probably a few seconds, but maybe. Wait, where can you get a mushroom shroud? I mean, like, does Crippen offer that? I do not believe Crippen does. I believe you'll have to go online. And the only company I've found so far that specializes in it is uh, C E O I O. All right, I know. And I, I like what Pat pronounced it, and I nailed the pronunciation for the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not so. So we have plenty of that. What's that? We have plenty of that. Yeah. yeah. And do you have to use well, this is with the mushroom? You do not have to. You can just get the shot. The mushroom. And then oh, yeah, the decompose. Yeah, it helps with faster decomposition. The, the mushrooms are infinity mushrooms. Bread, especially to break down hair, nails, and skin. So. And bones? No, they, it does not help with the breaking down bones, just the soft tissue. So you can be buried. Can be buried in a in a graveyard with that. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. You um, don't have to have different. That. Yeah, graveyards I believe just require a box, so they don't require a casket, but they do require they do require a box. Um, so. Like that a cardboard box. Um. Um, I, I don't know the specifics on what they require. Um, I just know it's separate than a casket just to kind of make sure you remain in there and that doesn't like collapse and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, do you still, if you're buried in a graveyard, mm -hmm. does that place still have to be cement lined or anything like that? Or can you just go back to the earth? Um, you do need a liner, but it does not have to be cement. Um, but a lot of uh, cemeteries are probably going to require more than, let's say, your backyard burial. Oh. So what, what they just throw a liner, you're not talking just cloth, just something. Yeah, an actual liner. So um, to keep the foundation, like the dirt solid, so you know you don't just have a bunch of big full of glass you know, but you, they don't require a casket. But that's the difference. But still buy out to grave like in the backyard? Yeah, the yeah, you would. Oh. Mm -hmm. Can you explain the term box? I heard you say that graveyards require a box or a casket. What, I don't, are you talking, not a cardboard box because that would disintegrate? I need help understanding that if you could please. Yeah, sure. So it's just, um, I'll maybe explain it better to you. So um, in a site, um, so let's say you've got a, I don't know how big the plots are, but probably assume five by nine. Um, you're going to need a liner of some sort that just goes inside to prevent this from collapsing in. So this is all the dirt around. And then you can be placed in either a casket or a shroud inside. And this can be dirt around as well. 
So what is the line you're made of? I guess I guess that's. I what think I'm different cemeteries have different requirements. I'm not sure. And, and we would get that at the cemetery. You would get that at the cemetery. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Sorry if that wasn't explained super well. I yeah. didn't do too much research on it. Um, also, um, oh, um, if you would like to provide home to homeless fishes in your post-life life, and you don't really feel like just being dumped overboard, you can sign up with a service called Eternal Reefs, and they have a process of using your remains turning it into a pearl ball cement, and then turning it into this beautiful artificial reef that your loved ones can help decorate. And they have expert experienced divers go place it in the ocean. So you become an artificial reef, giving home to homeless fishes. So um, it's a little more pricey at $4,500 is their lowest package, but it includes a lot of memorial options. What's that? Is that that stuff polluting the ocean? Um, no, they do environmentally safe um, materials and biodegradable. If you know, you put poems and things on the artificial reef. If not, it's all EPA compliant. But I mean, the ash, the other way, people just go dump the ash. Oh, um, so far they don't view that as polluting, um, and I only know the laws for the U.S. So. As long as you're in U.S. territory, three miles off sea, the EPA says it's okay. But if you're too busy looking at the sky to dream of the sea, you can be shot into space. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> there are a few companies that send actual rockets, and you can track their track their trajectory on you know live tracking. Um, one starts at just $1,500, and there's a bunch of different options. You can orbit, you can burn up upon re-entry as kind of a shooting star, you can just go on forever, which yes, pollution, space pollution, but they're saying that space is the new graveyard. Everyone has their own views and opinions about you know, these different options. Um, but if a rocket seems like a bit dramatic for you, you can also float up in a mesoloft balloon to 75,000 to 80,000 feet above the air and a robot will release your ashes into the atmosphere on a live stream. So, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, and they are EPA compliant. Uh, Celsius, the rocket shuttle company, is part of uh, FAA and the National Treasury on Peaceful Users compliant. So all these you know, have a lot of compliances and they've looked into the environmental issues and stuff like that. And um, the last one is gonna be, um, if you really like your jewelry, and uh, you would love to be worn by your loved ones, you can be turned into a diamond. You don't even have to be deceased to do this. It just takes an amount of uh, the hair you would have at a haircut. At least for the women, I'm not sure about the men, um, might be a few haircuts at that point. Um, but they, they extract the carbon from either your, a cup of your ashes or a amount of hair, and then they process that in creating a diamond. And they can create one or they can create many, and they've got different options. And the uh, cheapest one starts at $2,000. You can choose your carrot, your color, and things like that. So about 3 million people in the US pass on every year and still 2.7 million do these traditional options. So as the green movement evolves and gets more, more momentum going, it'll be really exciting to kind of see how these all shift and change and see where people really, really want to go and how they really want things to, uh, what their wishes really are. So any other questions? I may or may not Just be able to answer. Just to understand a little bit the diamond thing. So yeah. You said we could do this when we're alive. Mm -hmm. what, what would the diamond be? And then you would have it. Um, so it's a memorial diamond. So it's just made of your carbon. Oh, so yeah. you can so just go where? Uh, the diamond? Um, you can put it in a setting. You can put it in a setting for a necklace or a ring. Oh, the save for somebody to have. A piece yes. Of your carbon thing. Okay. Yes. Oh, yes. So it's a memorial diamond. Do the burial. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. 
familiar with uh, Rico Post, human <coughs> errors, and that's the ticket. I mean, zero pollution in any way mm -hmm. in return to soil. And I know they have their van now on the front range. They still aren't up and going. They thought it was going to be this. Oh, uh, they're not, they're not. I I just looked recently, and they said they're they're well, running. They're, they're up in Seattle. They have been for so. Oh, I looked at the one in the front range, and they said they were up and running. And this was up and running. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. And if if not, um, the natural funeral is also on the front range, and they are up and running, and they've got a um, chrysalis. Uh, that does the human composting. So that one, natural funeral. So it's 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 like recomposed. Yes, but, it, but yeah. it's a chrysalis instead of whatever they. Yeah. So they've got this big, um, kind of pretty looking, egg shaped container uh -huh. that they use to, you know, turn you into soil. And they also provide the alkaline hydrolysis that they've done natural funeral. So they're they're in Denver. Uh, around Denver, I think maybe Littleton. Okay, is not it naturalfunerals.com? Um, naturalfuneral.com, yes. And about how much is that? Um, it starts, the low end starts at 5,000, and I think the higher end is 7,000, so it's gonna be around 7,000 probably. Plus the transportation, with the kitty litter. With the kitty litter, <laughs> so cost of gas, not included. That's why I put quotations on free, because there's no such thing as a free lunch. I learned that in my economics class would, in high school. Do you have any idea how much it would cost to, to transport a body from Montrose to the front range? If you hire somebody to do it, I do not. Okay. If you do it yourself, it costs gas. Thank you. Yeah. 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 But you oh, have to the warn that some states, like Alaska, don't do it. So I, if my son lives in Florida, but he said he'd still want to be buried in his home state, I go, but I'd like to be expensive. I mean, I think we could do it ourselves. Yes. Yeah, but, but so we, would we have to check every state we're driving through with it? I think uh, a simple search um, will tell you the states you're not allowed to pass through as well. Okay. Um, and the states you are not allowed to pass through is very minimal. Do not go through DC. I know that's, it's not a state, but oh. it's not allowed. <laughs> so do not take a deceased loved one through DC. DC. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, you talked about the biodegradable urns with the tuna tree. So yeah. that's the one that had the two compartments? Yes, um, and there's a couple op other options. Um, I just didn't write down in the brochure. Do you have any here the in-home living urns? Yeah, so the living urn um, is going to, they're beautiful. Um, they've got a few different options, bamboo, ceramic, and they're going to be 149 plus the cost of the plant. So the cost of each trees and plants are only going to be another hundred, hundred and fifty dollars for a beautiful memorial plant. Um, and then Bio's Urn also has a, you know, planter option at home. Uh, it's just, I, it's not my cup of tea. They kind of look futuristic. They come in five colors, but they're very future delic and just kind of like this odd shape, odd in my mind. Obviously I'm biased. <laughs> and so, um, but it has plants in your ashes. Is that yeah, the yes. Deal? Yep, kind of the same. All of them are going to be very similar, where they've got two compartments one for the ashes, one for the plants as well. So if your plant does end up not making it, you can replace the plant. So it, the urn isn't made of ashes. It's no, yes, it's in post. All of them will be in post. Did you happen to mention that a friend of ours recently passed and she's having her ashes made into a sculpture? Do you have any information on that at all? I thought that was kind of a neat. I don't, but I will add it to my never-ending list of research. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I may have heard of something like that. Go ahead. Is there a way, like, if you keep it not being cremated, that you could do the tree thing? So there is a company that I've been following for many years, uh, Capsula Monday, and they are still working on it, and I'm not sure where they're getting hung up, but they their goal is to provide a capsule in which you can return your body, full body, no crema cremation needed, to the ground to plant a tree. I don't know why, because I think I looked at them 10 years ago, and they're still not there yet. Or on your property, you'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, if you really want to dig a 10-foot ground vertical, yeah. Tree and 
plant a tree. There you go. I mean, I'm sure you could do it horizontal too. I just don't know. The Japanese. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, in Japan, there is this beautiful uh, crematorium. So there are thousands of cremations protected by little LED food, lit up Buddhas, and it is just stunning. Um, I have not found anything like that here yet, but it is just absolutely awe-inspiring. Where is that? Japan. Japan. Yeah. I read that book that didn't like trees uh, a couple months ago, and he talks about how certain preserved forests in Europe, uh, you pay to fertilize the tree with your ashes, basically, or you can be buried in front of it. And it's a way that the money goes to helping with the open space. Okay. And I, I thought that was a super idea. Can we just, we probably, can you take a biodegradable urn and go to the forest and dig a hole here and do that? Legally? <laughs> no. Um, not on national park land. Yeah. Yeah. Land. yeah. And you're not supposed to yeah. scatter ashes on national land either. Um, but along the lines, one of the uh, biodegradable urns, nuclear motto is turning cemeteries into forest. So, you know, it still need designated areas. But, you know, you can plant the biodegradable urn in your own backyard, on your own land, you know, um, other public non-national regulated areas um, and no public <coughs> land no not national i'm so not sure about what other about like plants the pond over there by columbine school that's private property of yeah. the school district so yeah you have to get permits it's private property so you technically dig a hole on that for any reason yeah you're trespassing yeah. so my my biggest uh, advice is look at the rules and regulations with whatever you want to do whether that is you know, off the coast of the US, whether that's in your backyard, still contact your zoning planning commission. And you know, always, you just always wanna be in the same, you know, yeah. So are, are chromatines, or do they have any nutrient value or are they just sterile? I think they're just sterile. Mm -hmm. So they're litter. Yeah. Talk about donating to science. Yes. You, uh, you guys just said they have ahead of time, I guess. Yes. Um, so for uh, Science Care, which is one company I found, it only takes three minutes to do online. It only takes three minutes to sign up online to do so. Do you have a website? Um, yeah, I think it's just sciencecare.com or sciencecare.com. Yep, sciencecare.com. Sciencecare, C-A-R-E. Yes. You know, I, I signed up with them a couple years ago when you sign up, you weren't really signed up. I mean, you have to wait till you're radically ill, and that's when you get a hold. I don't know, it's kind of imperfect. Okay. I did actually sign up because I'm pretty sure I'm donating my brain to science as I've got a deep brain stimulator. And um, there's the Research Foundation for Dystonia would love to have my brain. So <laughs> at least someone would, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, um, my Dutch friend in Austin um, was picked up by the University of Texas the morning after she died. Okay. Um, and then we had a traditional memorial service with um, yes, her ashes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So beautiful. many of these donations to science will take care of the cremation afterwards. Yeah. That's usually how that that goes. They brought it into the family. Yeah. So she was saying that this came and picked her up mm -hmm. to donate to science. Yep. The university. So if you die in a hospital, you can have them pick you up in the hospital. You don't gotta go to a burial. Yeah, or depending or depending on who. Yeah. And then a home. <laughs> yeah, depending on who. Um, yeah. You know, once again, you know, I I'm here to help individually. Like, really pick what you want to do. Find out the legal yeah yeas and nays, do's and don'ts. Uh, this is just kind of an overview of all your options. So I can definitely get into the nitty gritty for any person independently. Um, but this is just kind of, hey, there's so many more options out there. 
so. Right, I never knew the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> it's a science option. Do they ever say, I'm sorry, we have too many bodies? We can't take you now. I don't, I don't know. Um, <laughs> that would be fascinating. I'm not sure if they've got a quota that they've got to meet or they haven't, or they have met and it's too much. Um, and where is it located? Science care? Um, I'm not sure, actually. Mm -hmm. What about the Bond Farm in Grand Junction? Is that related to the science? I believe it is a donation option. You'd have to, you know, look into that specific one. Um, I just think one as and there's so many different ways to donate your body, like organ donorship. Some, like Science Care, will not accept you if you're an organ donor. Why? I have no idea. What's that? Sorry. Oh, um, you know, so different ones have different stipulations, regulations. That's why, you know, I, once you decide, we can go down that route. Is body farm or science? I, I, I thought it was for a school, isn't it? I'm not sure. I can't remember. It's been so Forensics. Many years ago since yeah. I've been Forensics. I believe they study the use of bodies to study the various levels of decomposition yeah, for time, forensic circumstances. Yeah. It's the same. If you designated yourself as an organ donor and you had that little card on your yeah. driver's license, then uh, some some yeah. donation centers will still accept you. Some will not. Mm -hmm. And just because you're an organ donor doesn't always mean you are able to donate your organs. That's why I was wondering, does it age as a factor in the illness? No. They listed uh, dialysis for years. They wouldn't accept mm -hmm. a body that had yeah. gone through that. Yeah. But, you at, know, there's so many university. different, yeah, there's so many different donation options. Like for me, I'm pretty sure it really doesn't, as long as I still have an intact head at the end, I think they want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> so this, might be a dumb question, but like, so say you said you want to donate your brain, mm -hmm. is there certain parts that you could donate and still be whole for a mushroom suit? So the donation program um, I've been recommended to uh, participate in, uh, I would not be able to donate any other part of my body. I don't know why, I haven't looked into the specifics, except I just know there's that one exclusion. But if if it helps other people with my condition, take all of me, I suppose. <laughs> it seems like if you're forward thinking, um, either a private entity or public, and I think it would be better for the public, um, bought some land, created a park, and do something like these biodegradable ornaments or they something. Do that. Yes, they do. They do. Um, actually, there's quite a few different places. Are there any in nearby? Um, I haven't, do you know the Nevada? I'm thinking Japan again, but they <laughs> yeah. brought it over here, so yeah. it was East Coast, Pennsylvania. Um, folks were going, wanting to take um, advantage of that from Texas, and it was a little problem, I don't know what it was, but um, yeah, it's in this country. I, I, I didn't know of any, I'm not aware of any in Colorado. It'd be really nice if every community had that for a cemetery. Um, that's so awesome. that's the hope. It looks like the Living Urn Company we've talked about a few times does have a dedicated memorial forest mm -hmm. on the front range. So just a quick look. Um, the natural funeral, the Living Urn. So I think I think there's probably more than we know of. You know, because you see uh, cemeteries and headstones. It's pretty obviously a cemetery. You see a patch of trees and forest. You don't automatically go, oh, Memorial Forest. Yeah, so, um, which I just love the statement, turning cemeteries into forest. How much more exciting would it be to go visit your loved ones if there was a living tree instead of a headstone? Right? Yeah. And you don't have to bring them pet flowers because they're, <laughs> they are flowers <laughs> or trees. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if you guys have any other questions, um, my con I've got a business card. Um, my website's also on the back. Um, and my email is kind of on the back. I didn't realize there was a typo until the end. It's just Gmail. And my phone number is there as well. If you have any other questions, you can contact me personally and we can dive deep as far as you want to go. Yeah. Tell us your name again and do you have more of these? Yeah, absolutely. My name is Bree. B R E A. B R I. 
thank you very much. Of course. Yeah. Thank thank you all for me. Have you I'm also a notary, so if you have any documents you need in this process, let me know. How many do you want? Oh, I have one. one. Oh, you got it to the same box. Did she see? Is she, does she live here? Yes, yeah, Cindy. She, yeah. You will consult with the email. No, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. On uh, a person, I don't know. Oh, that's great. Because I have to transfer a lot of paperwork from Texas to Colorado. Oh, that's a project. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Of course. You did a great job.